Welcome to Fret Not. My name's Rob. My name's Colton, and welcome back to the Meet Your Maker series. And today, we're driving around in rural Alabama, and we just happened to run across a master luthier. We thought we'd bring you in, introduce you to him, let you see some of his work, and you're going to get to see a guitar he's building for us. Oh, yeah. So, everybody... Mr. Michael Wooten, MWS Guitars. Uh, we are in your shop. That's right. Um, don't worry. I know I'm standing in front of the guitars, but I got you. You're going to get close-ups on all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, thank you for letting us interrupt your work and come in here and see what you do. Uh, we do have a series of questions for you, and we're going to ask you some questions. But do you have anything you want to just say ahead of time about who you are and what you do? Well, first of all, I want to welcome you all to my shop. I uh, appreciate you all coming in and uh, getting a sneak peek of what I'm going to do for you here. Okay. Well, so now don't worry about it because here in a minute, we're going to get to show you all the parts on the stuff he's building for us. We're going to show you the stuff he's already got built. We're going to show you kind of why we were attracted to him to get him to build us a guitar. Um, Colton, you got some questions for him? Yeah. Um so we'll just kind of get right into the nitty gritty a little bit. When, <laughs> when did you start playing guitar? I started I started dabbling in guitar right around the age of nine. nine. I had like a little cheap acoustic guitar. I think I could play Mary Had a Little Lamb on there one string. Mm -hmm. Set it down for a little bit. And then a few years later in middle school, a bunch of my friends were talking about putting a band together. I don't think any of us could play instruments. Right. But you got to have a band. <laughs> and so I saved money up, bought my first guitar. It was a PV T60 mm -hmm. and a little PV solid state combo amp. Yep. Put it on a way, got it out in three months and started you know, learn, I think House of the Rising Sun was like the there first song I ever learned. Mine was Red River Valley. Okay. That was the first thing I ever, and it was horrible because I hated it. And the little teacher that was trying to kind of give me some entry level stuff was adamant that until I learned how to play Red River Valley, I would never play Deep Purple or Black Sun. <laughs> <laughs> I was learning to play Smoke on the Water on an acoustic. There you go. My, there first, you my, go. my first little toe in the water. So, um, because you started at such a young age, you, you know, we have we have other questions, but I want to add this in here because you started when you started. How long do you think it was before you kind of had the first thoughts of building one? Not long after I started playing, to be Is honest it? with you, yes. See, I played forever and never even considered it until I ran into a brick wall of not being able to buy what I thought I wanted. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that exactly. was years, years, years. I never even thought about it. You know what I mean? Well, the guitar I wanted was uh, Paul Reed Smith's uh, Santana. Oh, of course. And once I seen the prices... <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I was like, yeah, probably not. And so, like, I started uh, just kind of tinkering around with adding pickups. Okay, so you said that, you know, not too long after starting to play, that you kind of saw the, maybe the, you, or you had the inkling to build one. When did you start building guitars? I started probably right around 2000, 2001. Okay. Like, like I think the first body I built, I actually took a neck off of a pawn shop, a cheap pawn shop guitar, and just built a Telecaster body. And put that neck on it. There you go. Nice. And then uh, pickups, they were probably like some cheap pickups I found on eBay or something like that. So um, that's kind of where it all started. Cool. Nice. Um, so I guess on to the next one. Would you say that there is a particular like 
uh, genre or style of music that kind of influenced the way you wanted to build guitars? Yeah, probably rock from the mid 60s to the mid 70s, Led Zeppelin. Nice. Uh, Leonard Skinner, mm -hmm. you know, uh, ZZ Top bands like that, you know. Yeah. Right. And, you know, around that time, everybody played either a Fender or a Gibson. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. just about everybody. So, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of lean towards the Gibson uh, side of things. Uh, I mean, you can see throughout my building, you know, uh, occasionally I do you know, a Fender style guitar, but if I had my preference, everything I built would be. Well, you know, Gibson, you know, you know was, it, you know, Gibson and Fender have been staples for the whole world forever. Yeah. And it used to be when I was younger, if there was somebody on stage and they were playing and they weren't playing a Gibson or a Fender, I took that and it may just be personal. I took that as they're weird. You know what I mean? And I don't right. even care what they're playing because yeah, yeah. they're not playing staples. Well, that's completely reversed now. Mm -hmm. I want to, and I look for people on stage playing something different because I want to know about that because right. the Gibson and the Fender, don't get me wrong, they are big box and I'm not dogging on them, but that's old hat. You right. know what I mean? They've been making the same thing for eons. That's right. They do make adjustments. They do make upgrades, but you know, and, and I got to say it because I'm in front of the camera, the E string still won't stay. I mean, the G string still won't <laughs> stay in tune, Gibson. Yeah. You've been making the guitar for 80 years. Come on, help me. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Okay. Um, now, um, would you, is there like a particular gear that you favor, like uh, amps, pedals, anything that you prefer to play through? What do you play through? Right when, now, when I'm you playing... Uh, right now I'm playing through a Boss Cantana. Are you? Oh, nice. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, nice. uh, I, I've always leaned towards tube amps because I'm vintage. I love the vintage sound. I love everything about vintage. And so, I don't have any need for, you know, a big Marshall stack right now or a, you know, a Fender, expensive Fender amp. Um, I think, I can get every sound I want out of that boss guitar. So they, it was obviously been done in the last few years, but everything we do on our channel is through a quad cortex pedal. Okay. And it's mm -hmm. run into our computer system and we pipe that out through Yamaha studio monitors. We don't, we have amps. We have a lot of amps between us and I don't put them out and show them on the videos because we do not use them. Now, five or 10 years ago, if we were doing those videos, and I know the Quad Cortex wasn't out then, but if we were doing those videos then, and that's all I had was a pedal, I would have taken flack from day one <laughs> on right. every human being because I felt the same way. It's garbage. It doesn't replicate. It's it's manufactured. It's yep. it don't sound like a tube amp. And I'm I own a tube amp. Uh, I own a Borgner, Borg Warner, and it is amazing. Yeah. But I don't like to carry it around. It's okay, heavy. Is that? <laughs> it's just a pain in the butt to deal with if I'm sitting in my house playing. And because I'm not touring or doing anything, the quad cortex is freaking amazing. Right. It does so much. So that's what we chose. And what we try to do is we try to keep all the guitars, at least part of what <laughs> you're hearing, no matter how cheap or expensive the guitar is, we're running the majority of everything you hear through one patch. So you can kind of see, if you go back and look at the videos, you can kind of see the difference on way pickup sound, way yeah. wood sound. Kind of do a cross-reference. Yeah, attack yeah. sounds, things of that nature. So we try to do stuff like that. Now, we do get a little weird every once in a while. Sometimes we put in little stuff that's not on that patch mm -hmm. as a part of the song. Right. But the meat and potatoes of everything you hear is coming off that single patch. Gotcha. Yeah. So... Um, what are your thoughts on acoustic guitars? Uh, do you have a plan on making one, or does it interest you at all? Uh, right now, no. No? No. Um, and I, I'm never going to say never, because I don't know what <laughs> I'll want to do in the next five years, ten years. But um, probably right now, no. Okay. okay. Fair enough. So the big question before we get on and look at what your have on the table for us. Where do you see MWS in five years? Do you see MWS bigger? 
When I say bigger, I mean with more orders than you can physically take care of yourself. Do you ever see of hiring anybody? Is this always just a one man show, no matter how many orders you get stacked up? <laughs> you know, I go back and forth on that question a lot because. Can you trust somebody I, else to do what you do? That's the that, that yeah. that's the biggest that's question. The question. I, I don't think I can. <laughs> Because once you start delegating, I feel like the quality kind of goes downhill. And well, if you're not, if you don't have your hands on it from start to finish, and this, all of our viewers know, and I didn't, we're not bragging or nothing, but I mean, I have 16 custom high end guitars, and every one of those guitars are built by somebody start to finish. Yeah. I don't, I, well, I'll take that back. The PRS may or may not be the Wood Library. Who knows how they do that? It's freaking amazing, but. The majority of guitars, we just got four guitars in for our giveaway series yesterday. Mm -hmm. They're all really high to mid-high level price. They're all amazing. There's nothing wrong with them. But I'm so jaded because when <laughs> I want to play, I play something like that. Right. You know what I mean? It's There's a difference. Exactly. And I try, I've been, we've been trying for months to convey that to people. And we understand everybody can't go get commission a high-end right. guitar to be made. Right. But I don't know how in the English language to quantify <laughs> that and get that across, right. that there's a difference. There is. Um, can you play both of them? Can you enjoy both of them? Can you do live with both of them? Absolutely. There is a difference. There's a difference. When you in, do something in, like this. Not just in sound, but in feel. <sighs> yeah. All of it. You know, mass-produced guitars are, they don't have a soul, really. I, you know, that when word was in my head. Well, we've used that word in the past, we, and, and that's... The way we, no, let me stop that. It's the way I quantify spending the amount of money that I spend on guitars for our channel mm -hmm. and for our enjoyment is they got soul. There's right. mojo. Exactly. There's something in the guitar that doesn't come out of a machine. Yep. I just purchased a couple of months ago a Les Paul Gold Top. Always wanted one. Found one in Montgomery at a music store. Brought it home, and I can't even make myself like to play it. <laughs> Once I've sat down, and this is this is my personal guitar. And when I sat down with this, I mean, just the feel of the neck, the way the way it resonates, the way it sounds, just the way it feels, the way it feels on my forearm right there, mm -hmm. is just totally different. I mean, the Les Paul is almost like a piece of plastic. Well, right. I just iterate a little something on that. I paid. This was ages ago, and I, I may get the numbers wrong. It was either thirty nine hundred dollars or forty nine hundred dollars. I don't remember because it's been so. I'm old. I don't know how I'm get what it was, but I I bought a Les Paul Deluxe sixties, decked out, most beautiful black ebony thing you ever seen in your life, and that guitar was amazing. And in my younger life, I used it in the studio to track stuff. No matter what guitar was on the song, I always did a second track with that Gibson because of the tone. But I ended up selling that guitar. No matter how, there were so many good things, but the few bad things to me outweighed it. And mm. some of, I had a little Stratocaster that we was a part Stratocaster we built. We put a specific neck, specific pickup, specific wiring. You know what I mean? We used a body from yeah. a, a Strat body, but we built the guitar and we made it to me. And to me, that guitar, that guitar probably cost a fourth of what that Les Paul cost, yep. and it smoked it in playability and me seeing it in a stand and going, I got to play that now, you know? And yeah. that's, that's what I feel like you lose a lot with big box is that desire to just drop everything. I've got to play that. Right. That's, that's tough. It's like they, uh, they figure out a formula that works and it does. And then they're like, okay, we're going to, you know, we're just going to set this to ones and zeros and we're just going to chop yeah. them up and print them out. And it's like somewhere in that process, they, they lose the soul. Right. So, well, listen, now we want to get to the important part. We're going to be right back and we're going to show you what we've got laid out, what he's building for us. And we're going to get you close ups of all these gorgeous things sitting behind me that I'm blocking your view of right now <laughs> on purpose. We'll be right back.
was uh, is like putting the alcohol on it, something that you usually do sometimes just to kind of see how it may come out. I do. Beforehand using the stain. And the website that I order these from, this is how they photograph them. Nice. So, you know, you can see what you're getting, the, the grain and all. Because, I mean, you see when once it dries, a lot of that goes away. Yeah. So you do this and you use the alcohol because water will actually warp it real bad. Makes sense. So basically, this is our body. That's right. And this right. is a sapile? That's correct. Okay. And then this, we picked this top because That's... we were really going back and forth between um, between a flamed and a quilted. And this kind of seems to have both in it. That's right. Uh, so it's it's kind a... of unusual to see uh, this, you know, both figures in one top. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what that's what made me gravitate to this one. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, as far as the neck goes, I'm gonna put a little something on that so they can see that. And that's gorgeous. I'm super excited for how that neck is gonna turn out. I mean, I'm excited for the whole thing, but that's awesome. That's some roasted flame maple. Mm -hmm. um, you got a roasted flame maple neck, inch and a quarter thick, and it's uh, it's gonna be a pretty one. And what is this? Um, this is a form of ebony, of course, on the fretboard. That's right. Quilgum ebony. Okay. It comes from West Africa. Nice. Um, you know, ebony is getting a little scarce. The black ebony like right. we grew up with on the, the fingerboards. And so a lot of luthiers are going to something like this because it's a lot more readily available than just the straight up black ebony you're used to. So what I want to show you guys now is you're looking at the natural side and you got to see some of the figuring. That's what we're building. I love it. That's going to be amazing. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to move over here. We're going to see all of our parts and obviously if you know us on this channel we're doing hip shot everything we got hip shot open gear locking tuners and we got a hip shot fixed bridge and you know we're not building a guitar if cody at aurora tone pickups in canada isn't designing the pickups and so these just came in for us um this is a set he made especially for us for ultraviolets and uh they're gonna sound amazing so here's some of our parts so man, we're just uh, we're just really juiced on this. We're we're just really ready to see what you're going to put together for us. I'm really excited about this one. Um, can't wait to get started on it. Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, we really hope you enjoyed this. Um, there's going to be links on this video, all over this video for MWS guitars. Make sure you go to his website. Make sure you check out everything that he's done. He has a ton of stuff on Instagram and on his website. We're going to try to link mm -hmm. everything. And now you've seen what he's building for us. Um, I'm going to put you on spot on the camera. Okay. What's our time frame, man? Six weeks. Six weeks. That's not too shabby. Life is good. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do um, in the future, we're going to give you updates on this as he sends them to us. And then obviously we'll, we're going to do a review. And honestly, we're probably just going to bore you to death like with 10 or 20 shorts on it because we're going to play the crap out of it. Yeah, no doubt. All right, listen, guys, we really appreciate you. Make sure you go to his website. Make sure you go to his Instagram. Check out what he's doing. He is located kind of in the southeast part of Alabama. Um, another fantastic American luthier. Uh, you got to see some of his guitars, some of his work, and you got to see what he's working on for us, man. Um if you're in that kind of a market, if you're even thinking about any kind of a custom man, make sure you give Michael a call and see if he can work out something for you like he's doing for us. Yep. Ben, we really appreciate you. I appreciate y'all coming to visit me. It's been amazing. Absolutely. And until next time. Stay tuned.